there is there is actually quite a bit of complex complexity involved in TCP communication when you think about it. You have a number of layers, that data link layer, the network layer, the transport layer, the application layer, all invo involved in this communication and they all have to coordinate with one another. You have MAC address at the data link layer, you have IP address at the networking layer, you have TCP at the transport layer, you have our ARP that sits between the data link and the network layer. And so there are just a few examples. There are other protocol and function that are all happening in concert with one another. So let's take a look at the host to host packet delivery process using TCP and simplify this to some degree. And as we go through this, we are going to see exactly how data is transferred on a network, how to end system can coordinate his packet delivery. So we are going to begin with two computers on the network that want to talk to each other. Now we are going to have to have some sports sporting case here. So we are going to have a DNS server that is going to provide some resolution for us. Now in this example, let's assume that we have an application that is running on our computer that want to send some traffic. Now he says, the application says, okay, I have got to this data put together. Maybe it is an email, maybe it's a telnet, whatever case may be. I have some traffic and a night I need to be sent reliably. Now I want to set up a connection to 192.168.3.2. Now if we look at this topology 198.3.2, this is the destination. So the application passes of the data to the application layer of the OSI model or the application layer of the TCP IP stack. Now let's assume this is the TCP IP stack. So we are going to skip the presentation and session layers. So we go from the application layer and the application layer says, okay, I need to send this reliably. So I'm going to use the transport layer, which provide me reliable service. And so the transport layer says, okay, not a problem. I'm going to go ahead and use TCP. Now, remember TCP is the connection oriented service and we need this to be sent reliably with sequence number and acknowledgement and all that good stuff. So the transport, Board layer instruct the TCP protocol to set up a session to 192.168.3.2. Now you might be wondering how does this machine and even this application know what address the destination is? How do we know that 192.168.3.2 is how we want to talk to? Well, that's where this little DNS servers come into play. You see, let's say we are sending an email and email need to establish through an email server. Well, when we plug in our mail server setting, we are going to plug in a fully qualified domain name. It might be mail.something.com. And so we are going to resolve, <coughs> excuse me, resolve mail.something.com using DNS, which might point us to 192.168.3.2. So that DNS is just a separate application. Okay, so let's just say that we have got this transport layer that is now going to set up a TCP session for me. So TCP, if it were a person and could speak, it would say, hey, TCP IP, let's send this TCP sync to 192.168.3.2. Now at this point, what's going to happen? Well, the next thing to happen is that IP layer, the network layer, it says, okay, no problem, TCP, I will go ahead and send that sync packet or that send segment to 192.168.3.2. So IP say, says, I need to pa pass this down to layer two. Well, as it is passing that down to layer two, it is going to add some header information. So we are trying to keep track of this. So it puts a source IP address in the header, it puts the destination IP address in the header, and it also includes the TCP header that was passed down from the layer above, which has that little flag toggle it that says that this is a send. Okay, so now the IP protocol has told layer 2 to send the packet to 192.168 dot 3.2 before layer 2 can do this 
it need to make sure it has a an ARC cache entry. So layer two says, hey ARC, do you have an entry or a mapping for 192.168.3.2? Now in this case, ARC might say, yes, I do. And then we can go ahead and create the layer two frame. In this case, ARC says, well, let me look. Is 192.168.3.2 in my ARC table? ARC consult the ARC cache or the ARC table. It find that it is not there. So ARC says, I guess layer two is going to have to put the packet in the buffer, kind of in a parking lot. It is going to store it while I do an ARC. So ARC goes to work. It says I'm going to go ahead and send, send out a message. So that packet that we want to send is now sitting in a packet buffer, as we can see on right side. And ARP creates an ARP request that ARP request says, hello, I am 192.168.3.1 and my MAC address is 08000.0222.222222. Are you 192.168.3.2? Now you have to remember that this is a broadcast. So he's sending it out to everybody. ARP says, okay, layer two, go ahead and send this ARP message using our MAC address as the source and for the destination make it all f's f is that's that broadcast address so we can see the destination is the broadcast address the source is ourself and this is an art request and so we send that out onto the wire now the original packet that tcp send that we were asked by the application to set up it is sitting there in the packet buffer this whole time so layer two says, all right, it is sent. And we are just waiting. That frame travel across the wire as a broadcast and any other machine on the layer two network address hear this broadcast. So in this case, it is the device that we intended to receive the ARP request. So the layer two on our receiving device says, hey, I just got a frame. It has got a broadcast MAC address on it. So I'm going to have to process it. I need to look on it. It's for everybody. The protocol ID says that is an ARP. Let me strip off that layer two header and send it up to the ARP application. So we strip that off. Layer two say, hey ARP, there is something for you to take a look at. ARP says, okay, that an ARP request from 192 dot one six eight dot three dot one now that i heard from him and i know his mac address let me put that in my art table and then that way i can respond to him and say yeah that is me so now art says okay i need to put together an art reply that says hi i am three dot two and my mac address zero eight zero zero dot zero two 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 dot one 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 so that so then ARP says, okay, layer two, can you send this ARP reply using our MAC address as the source and send it directly back to 0800.0222.222? No need to broadcast this. Send it directly to him. So layer two says, all right, it is sent and packet is now on its way. Now on the other side, layer two, receive that frame, he says, okay, this has my MAC address. I have to process it. And the protocol ID tell me that this is an ARP. So now we let me strip off the layer two header. And then I'm going to send that on a, up to ARP. Hey ARP, here you go. I have got something for you. Now ARP says, okay, this is an ARP from uh, 192.168.3. It is an ARP reply. Now I can add this IP and MAC address into my ARP table. And remember that that can be viewed on Windows or Linux machine using ARP-A command. So ARP says, hey, layer two, I now have the that mapping you needed. 192.168.3.2 is now mapping to 
MAC address 0800.0222.111. So now we can send that packet, that is the packet buffer. Now ARP says, okay, this is an ARP from 192.168.3.2. It is an ARP reply. Now I can add its IP and MAC address into my ARP table. And remember that can be viewed on Windows or Linux machine, as I earlier said. So layer two builds the frame for me. And we can see in the frame that is now built. We have a couple of item of relevance. There is that original TCP send. That is my layer four information. That is my transport layer information. Then I have my source and destination IP address. That is the network layer or what we might call layer three. Then we have the source and destination MAC information. We might call that layer two data. And the source and destination MAC are specific addresses. This is not a broadcast, this is a unicast. Okay, so layer two says, all right, I can send that pending packet and it gets sent across the wire. Now, when the receiving computer sees that frame come in, he goes, okay, I've got something. It is got my MAC address on it. And so this is for me. That means that I need to strip off the layer two information and pass whatever is left up to the network layer. The network layer looks, he goes, yep, that destination at IP address, that is me. So I need to strip off layer three information and pass it up to transport layer. Now when it goes up to the transport layer, remember at layer three or at the network layer in the header, we had a protocol field. The protocol field indicate that this was TCP. So it's, it says here you go TCP. I have got something for you. TCP look at this and say, okay, I need now send a send ank to the TCP send that you just handed me. I need to reply back because we are doing a three-way three -way handshake. So now TCP says, here you go, send this. And it give me TCP send ACK. We pass that down. We add a layer three header, which includes the source and destination IP address, passes that down to the data link layer. The data link layer now adds the destination and source MAC address and then forward it out on the wire again. So now that gets to the other side, TCP is going to eventually receive this frame again, get the sync egg and say, all right, I got it. He acted me and now I'm going to have to reply back to that with an X. So I need to let him know that I got his sync egg and this will complete your three-way handshake. So now TCP create an egg that is going to go back to 3.2, passes it down to the network layer, which add the layer three header with source and destination IP. Layer three passes that down. Hey, data link layer, I need to send this. Data link layer add source and destination MAC address information into its header and then send it out on the wire. It get to the other side and we are good. So at this point, we have done that three-way handshake and layer four can now report back to the application. Hey, I have set up your session. Now everything we have done up to this point, it is just setting up the session. Now it is time to send the data. So the application says, all right, here you go. This is the date. This is that application data that I wanted you to send. And now the TCP protocol is going to set up that application data to be sent in reliable connection. So it's add a sequence number on here, passes it down to the network layer. The network layer adds source and destination IP address, that down to the link layer, adds source and destination MAC, and then passes that out onto the wire. It gets sent across the wire as it's come into the next device. The receiving device sees a frame. That frame has its MAC address as the destination. So it strip, strips it off passes that up to layer three, takes a look at the source and destination IP, yep. 
that is my IP right there. I'm going to go ahead and strip this off. The protocol said it was TCP, so I passes it, passes, pass it up a layer to TCP. TCP looks at the sequence number and say, okay, I got this data. I can hand this application data right up to the application. And at this point, we need, we would need to send an ACK and say, yep, I got that data. Now the ACK is going to be one number higher than the sequence number. So assuming this is the last byte that was sent, it was a number three. He acknowledged that he says, the next thing I expect to see from you is number four. So he sends an ACK back, there is no data carried here at this point. The ACK is for add my layer three headers. Add my layer two headers, send it out on the wire, and now I have just established host-to-host -host communication using TCP.